episode of Carpool. Now, each week I give someone funny, interesting, very experienced, or even all three, uh, a lift in my car and we have a conversation. Well, today's guest I've been watching on television for many years. Um, I've had experienced certain uh, periods of bitterness when I've watched him, uh, sitting on the sofa with my missus, because uh, she thinks he's gorgeous and sensitive and intelligent and caring and sympathetic, and really rubs it in. And then I met him in real life and he's all those things. Please welcome into the passenger seat, Kevin McLeod. Where's your mic? Oh, they're in there. No, they're mm, remarkable. Remarkable piece of technology. You should use them. You could stick them in people's kitchens. You could hide them in the house. Oh, yeah, because they're not a tool of yours, are they? No. <laughs> <laughs> So you barely know so there is no... sat on the ceiling above the bed. <laughs> Nothing, it's just a large fly. So <laughs> you know, so I don't know. When, we, when you probably started Scrappy, when I started Grand Designs, there was a fantastic uh, fashion in television for the exploitation of hunters, people, members yes. of the public. Yeah, well, it's still going on. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. still going on. Um, but without their knowledge, without their... Yes. You know, it, seemed, it just seemed to me incredibly unfair yeah. and, and, and wrong and smug. Yeah. yeah. Of television to do that. And the other thing that television does, of course, is to go into people's lives and say, look, we've made over your kitchen in a weekend for £4.50 with, yes, sink with some MDF. And, MDF <laughs> and you're going to love it because we're going to tell you that you're going yeah. to love it. And we want you and to actually, cry when you see it. Yeah. And, and, the, so and the key issue here was getting it done over a weekend. As yeah. you can, and I always felt, actually, most people on the whole spend a bit more money and a bit more care. And, and a lot more time. And a lot more time. Yeah. Uh, and and it is their home we're talking about, for yeah. personal private space. So, I, I I never really got that. The thing is, you see, though, I'm I, I'm quite sort of fierce about this. That I think the thing that telly does best of all is entertain. And in a sense, you know, if you if you're not entertaining, if all you're doing is informing, yeah, you've you've lost it. Yeah, you know, you're making open university programs at yes. that point. Yeah. In 1972. Well, I have because I have done open yeah. university programs in 1998, yeah. and they're still on. <laughs> And they're very informative. <laughs> I, I, was, I was dragged in to make them entertaining. But I don't know if I Well, they, there's them justification, you see. Getting gags out of uh, particle physics is, is tough. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm sure there are some. Where are we going? We're going through <laughs> Oldford. I, mean, I live around here. Yeah. I, 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 know, I know where I am. <laughs> I like just going out. It looked like a nice road. This is, but it'll. I'll, okay, I'll keep it I know. Oh, you know. We'll tell no, me no, where no. to go. Well, we'll go left at this junction. Excellent. Could have gone down that one, yeah, couldn't I? You, you could have gone through the pub car bar, but we'll oh, turn left see. at the junction. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, well, they're right the prison road, isn't there? Look. Yeah, yeah separating the pub a, car I park from the from I think there is a pub. I would say that is a public through fair, sir. Yeah. But then how do you I don't know how I don't know anything about you, actually. Good. At all. Good. <laughs> Let's just keep it that way. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't want to tell us anything. I don't know how you got involved in it, or... Uh, I, I've been making... I, do you know what? I had I had a design business and a little manufacturing business. Right. And I was tinkering away. So not architecture then, it no, was Well, more... I was making stuff for buildings. I was designing lighting and furniture. Right. At that point. I had a forge. Wow. Uh, so we had we had some great skill guys. Four guys in the forge. We had... You know, right. um, we were... Had, had finishers and electrical guys and... Right. Uh, 26 people working in the business. Wow. Yeah, that was good. It's a good business. Yeah. Uh, making very beautiful objects. We did lots of lighting and furniture for hotels and fun. Right. People like the historic Scotland and, 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 and uh, just some really lovely, lovely things. A bit of restoration work on, on old buildings and, yeah. and metal work and so on. And, but my background had been architecture design and, right. and, 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 and they sort of all fed into this business. But, but, but I was doing so much lighting in the 1990s at a time when nobody was really talking much about lighting. There were two or three of us who had written perhaps a little bit about it right. in Britain. Um, and whereas nowadays, because the lighting designer is the fashionable accessory to have. Right, um, yes. Then it was the Feng Shui consultant <laughs> in the mid-90s. Yeah. And, I, and so when the BBC wanted to do some little pieces about lighting for programs like One Foot in the Past and Home Front, I'd get rung up because right. there was no one else. Yeah. Wasn't it? I was top of the tree, just right. there was no tree. Right. Um, and uh, they'd have to come to me. So yeah. I, I did one or two pieces. And then I did a few more and a few more. And I just kept going. Just kept right. Mostly they're not on YouTube, those uh, contributions. Oh. <laughs> I think people should. No, no. Because no, 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 no. no, they were recorded onto Shellac. Yes. <laughs> That's why. They were hand chiseled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Now, there's some of my early televisual contributions I'm very grateful I've not managed to find on YouTube because yeah. they would be deeply embarrassing. Yeah. I've still got some videotapes somewhere. But then I, I shared a, a, a flat for many years, actually, uh, in my youth with a, an architect, uh, a French architect called Christophe Igre. I know Christophe Igre. Do you? Yeah, of course. He's yeah. a lovely fella. So, we, yeah. so, so I had a, a lot of... Still working and still... Still, still very, yeah, very successful. Very much, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So do you think we should go back? You go, you go right and go left. Right. Go right and left. Go right. It's a, it's a difficult junction, this, because it's blind on the right-hand side. You have to be very careful. Ooh. You have to stick your nose out delicately. Ooh. I'll do that as well. Ooh. You go. I think we're all right. Oh well, oh, there we go. Well, it's it a small world. You're right. Because, uh, yeah, because I mean, but but sitting with him in his room, uh, with, with his drawings and everything, it, you know, it gave me an amateur appreciation of space and structure and material. And he'd always have, he'd, you know, do all those things that I love that architects well, do. Have like types of material on their desk. Samples. Yes, yeah, samples. Yeah. It makes them feel like good. Yeah. Otherwise, all they've got is a pencil and a piece of paper. Yes. Um, <laughs> But it's interesting because you've got this spatial mind and, and you apply it in, say, Scrappy, I think brilliantly because it, it, you have this role of interpreter, which I like. I, 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 and it's something I, yes, oh, I'm always trying to do, so to stand back from the action and sort of act as the Greek chorus, almost explaining what's happening. And you, you really need that. You need yeah. the narrator explaining yes. things in yeah. television, in, particularly when it's, it, you, you, it's, it's visually complicated. Yeah. Um, and, and architecture is the same. You know, architecture, you, you, it's very hard. You can't just take the camera around and expect people to understand the building. Yeah. You explain it as you go. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a funny discipline, architecture. Yes. It's, in, in as much as it's entirely abstract and, and, and theoretical, it's all about promising stuff. Yeah. With bits of paper and marks on. People yeah. say, oh, I don't like that building. And, and you have to explain to them, no, it's not a building. That's a piece of paper. Yes. <laughs> just... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I like all those lines. Look, there's a yeah. house. No, no, that, no. Those, are, those are bits of graphite yes. deposited on the surface of the paper. That's all it is. Yeah. And as a consequence, architects often deliberately draw with blunt back carpenter's pencils in order to make it as ambiguous as right. possible. You know? Right. Well, that because when Christoph shows me the, the idea drawings of a building, it is literally like, like a, sometimes like a child's drawing of a snail shell. It's done in crayon and it's a great swirl. Yeah. And I go, well, what? I don't yeah, know. You know, so it's quite that? good for him. And he goes, this is, we are thinking of this. You know, he's very French. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, the feeling we have. It's conceptual. Say, First off, it's a squiggle on a bit of paper. I mean, not, you know, a three year old could do it. And he takes huge offense. He's, he's had to put up with me for a long time. But then the actual finished building, well, like the Peckham Library, that, you know, which was, I remember seeing lots of drawings for that before it was built. Yeah. It was a pile of bricks that a kid would do, you know, to work yeah, with sticks holding it. Yeah, that makes you look Hadid's drawings look like. Um, yeah, you know, a, a map of the London Underground. Yeah, yes. Most That's of them. That's hard the, yeah. for your, your layman to get a hold of that. I mean, that is definitely. But then, yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I've, I've found it fascinating as a, you know, completely, you know, just as an observer to, to see how that those things come to fruition. And the bit, you know, he's now doing um, giant leaves for giant trees at the entrance of the Olympic. Site That's right. out of he is, some he? weird metal, and it's yeah. all very. Yeah. And they've got one in their office, their lovely office in London. They have one right. of the leaves, they're yeah. huge. I mean, they're absolutely enormous. It's interesting that he chooses to work here, though, isn't it? I, I mean, know. so many architects do, like Zaha does, for example. Yeah. Although he, he is Anglo French. I mean, his mother is was he? English, yeah. Lo lovely family he comes from, and uh, his, his mum. So he was raised in Paris, but, but educated in Paris, but then came here. Yeah. And did the AA and well, all then that he stuff. does have the opportunity to work in both cities. Yes. And, and he prefers here. Yeah. Well, uh, London is, and Britain indeed is, is the, 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 almost one of the, it's one of the very, very few centres of excellence, not so much in architecture, but in engineering. Right, I think, yeah, yeah. And consequently, architects love that because yes. they, they've got the resource of engineers and engineering there yeah. that they can use. Um, and I, that, mean, that, 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 I think it's a very, very important part of architecture is, is you know, because the squiggle is just the squiggle. Yeah. You can draw a squiggle anywhere in the world, yes. but actually making it buildable yeah. uh, is is fundamentally important. And I, I love that. The, I think that's it, most, it has to most resemble the squiggle, of course, when yes. it's built. Yes. <laughs> but that when I, when I first met Christophe and was in love with a beautiful girl in Paris and spent a lot of time at the Pompidou with him, because yeah. I'd only, well, I think it was a couple of years old at the most, and I'd also known through a social group I was in, and which I think how I met Christophe was uh, one of the architectural engineers that worked on the external structure and the joints and the yeah. bolts yeah. on the Pompidou. Yeah. Was just fat, you know, to go in that building and see you know, a bolt that was thicker than your leg holding a big, 
and the way it was joined together. I mean, that yeah. was really yeah. uh, that time because you'd never. Well, the point about that them. building and so many of its kind in the, in the high tech movement was that it was all about demonstrating the. The, the connections and demonstrating the structure yeah. and the aesthetics of the building became, grew out of the structure. Yes. It isn't modernism. Modernism is all about actually covering up, up the structure, the structure. Right. and uh, in a sense almost suggesting that the structure is not doing anything, that in right. fact the building is defying gravity. Right. Right and then left. No, right. as you know, just go right here, just go, go right. right. Go right here. Go to my house. Oh, okay. Right. Um, um, yeah, well. <laughs> go pop in for a cup of tea. Get off the very nice. Wait, come see the missus. Yeah. Actually, you must come because my son wants you to leave. All right. Leave him yours. Okay. You've got, to, you've got to do that. Okay. Um, but no, cause just cause that, to explain that to me then, because I bet Christoph has, but I've forgotten. It, 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 and, no, I know. Well, I know I'm going to say the wrong thing, but is that what's postmodernism? Oh, it's modernism what? with posts. <laughs> so that's probably just saying that's got posts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, when you on, say that's I mean, not. I just, I, oh, these I don't, labels. No, I'm sure these, they're really bad. That's why I didn't want to bring it up. These labels are for. These labels are for. They're, they're for architectural critics and they're for architects. Right. Micro contextual modernism, oh, macro, really? m macro medial. I mean, it's all nonsense. Right. In a way, it's nonsense. It's it's the, for architectural historian institutes to go left here. And what about? I mean, because then the thing with uh, your Prince Charles and his. Yeah. He's not my Prince Charles. Sorry. <laughs> Our Prince. No, I want to know. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> it's not your. He's not my. <laughs> uh, I don't. But his, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, you know, I haven't yeah. signed. I'm not. I'm not fully paid up member. Right. Of no. The royal family. I think. Pull over just here. All right. Okay. We'll pop in and see the missus. Is okay. that right? No, that's brilliant. That's wonderful. <laughs> now, are we going the right way now? Yes. Oh, good. We go down the hill, follow the road round to the right. It's a charming village. This. Very pretty. It's pretty yeah. in the autumn. So uh, now I can't even. Remember, we were talking I can about something exactly. interesting. Can you? Well no, done. The point oh, about the point about modern. That's right. Not modern, modern, but high tech. High tech is that it's like Gothic architecture. With a Gothic building, you can read a Gothic cathedral, and you know, you can read the engineering in the position of the flying buttresses. You yes. see where all the loads are being distributed. Yes. Yes. Um, left. 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 In a modernist building, you usually can't. Yeah. Because it's all just white it's all beauty yeah. and shape. It's, a, it's a uh, like a glass, glass box or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You don't know how but that in how a high tech up. building, you can see all the where all the loads are being taken. Right. There's big bolts. There's big pinions yes. and yeah. You know, the, the structure is is legible. Yeah. And it's very satisfying. I yes. Think. Well, I have to say, I did find that. Oh, I found that building incredibly exciting at the time. I don't know whether it's... I haven't seen it for many years. Pompidou, it's, 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 it's still good. It's still good. Now, and, in fact, you know, interesting Rogers building in London that he then did after that uh, was the Lloyds yes. building. And, 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 and that too looks as good now. Yes, it does. It, actually, it hasn't dated, it's, you're right. It has it not dated. No. Whereas a, whereas a sort of uh, Toys R Us, uh, you know... Uh, Box on a yeah. on a on a shopping yeah. thing with a big with a sort of fake eighties. I mean that look. There was a look that people stuck. Sort of well, which is yeah, the, the sort of the Terry Farrell egg yes. egg cup uh, TVA oh, building. The, the TVA building that which, dated actually, within minutes. Didn't it? Yeah, although well, actually I like Terry Farrell stuff because of all the, of all those sort of postmodernists, his, his has his is the most informed. Right, his stuff is the most uh, witty. Yeah, you know. but it's a dangerous thing when you try and build an architecture of wit. Yes, I would imagine it could, it could be a gag that wears thin. You yeah, know. yeah. Because yeah. when you when you you've built in a modern style, but using using a, oh, traditional materials, yeah. or, or or you somehow reinvent a building or a building language or a colour scheme or a, a palette of materials, and you you apply it to another building style to try yeah. and reinvent a vernacular. But that's a dangerous thing because it can often fail. You can often produce something which is this, which actually with the passage of time looks of itself quite dated. You know, you yeah. say, oh, there's a bit of 80s vernacular, a bit of, a bit of yes. 90s repro, a bit of yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, right now, developers have this obsession about uh, building sub Prince Charles, sub Poundbury, Georgian-esque. Right, right. yeah. Uh, weirdly, uh, it's a fiberglass Georgian, really. Is yes, it is, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Where the chimneys plonked on the top of the actually aren't connected to the hearth, instead they're connected via a sort of steel flue to the gas boiler. <laughs> yeah. Odd. And uh, the ones even I visited in Poundbury are interesting because they're, they're lovely thatched cottages with little low windows. And this is, a, is this the development that. This is Prince Charles Charles Charles's, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're very quaint on the outside, these right. little cottages. But you go inside and it's all the inconveniences of the thatched cottage, i.e., low ceiling, right. dark, small windows, yeah. um, small rooms, right. uh, cramped, with none 
of the delights. No yes. England fireplace, no stone flags don't fall, no beams. Right. You know, it's just a modern, small, small pokey house. Pokey house. Isn't that interesting? Wow. The big Georgian houses, the big, the, the more interpretative, what modern buildings with Georgian windows that are, are power breathing, more experimental buildings, right. are better because they've got right. higher ceilings and they're more beautifully detailed yes. inside. But I, I'm not a fan of this kind of this style of architecture which is purports to be of one era or age on the outside and yet inside is just your bog standard yes. product. Because yeah. our experience of buildings is of the inside of them, generally speaking, of our homes. Of our homes, certainly. Yeah. 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 I, knew, I knew a couple who bought them. Fantastic house, which was a, 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 a Doric uh, temple facade. Right. It was fantastic. It was four columns and a pediment. It was brilliant, beautiful building. But inside, their view was of the petrol station across the road. Right. And so, after six months, they sold it. Oh no. Yeah, well, you know, as you would. I mean, they would have seen it before they moved in. You'd think so, yeah. wouldn't you? But they were so in love with the building. They were right. so kind of that they forgot to look out of the window. Yeah. Yeah. You do look out of your windows, don't you? That's you do. Thing you do. And you do look at your ceiling, and you do stare at the fireplace. You do. And you lie in the bath. And you look at your ceiling. I was very proud of a bathroom up. ceiling. Oh, that made me happy. Oh, yeah. But uh, we've got low ceilings, which you know was just the way the house was built. I mean, not well, like oldie cottage low, but you can I can reach the ceiling. Fine. And I've always wanted to have you know. 19 That's years of wishing I had a high seat. You know, when we visit friends who've got like, old Georgian houses, you go, oh, look at yeah. the ceiling. Oh, yeah. it's so oh, high. It's obsessing about <laughs> ceiling heights. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I've always obsessed about a view of the sunset, which I've never had, you know. No, we don't have that. No, we have the sunrise, but we don't have the sunset. Well, you just got to get up earlier. Yeah. But I also want you to quickly mention your electric car race, because <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I've got, I've, yeah, it was because we were driving Teslas, which are really yeah. fast, exciting, accelerative electric cars. The exciting thing about them is that you can you can overtake much bigger much, much gas guzzlers, bigger. And, yeah. and as you do so, you you really do feel like, like you're driving a piece of the future. You know? Yeah, like yeah. you're driving a slice of 2050. Yes, and, and that is the, the buzz of that. I mean, it is incredibly uh, exhilarating. It, it, it's it's rejuvenating. You know, you, you, yeah, you, it's like owning an apple. Computer, you know, yes. it works. It yeah. does it brilliantly. Probably like owning efficient. Apple computer in 1987, when no, but not many people had them. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit more common now, aren't they? Before anybody calculated the carbon footprint of an Apple computer. Yes, tried to think. Um, but it, it does feel it does that clever thing that that, that that Steve Jobs did with Apple, and that is make you feel as though you're owning a slice of the future. I love yeah. that. that. That that experience is. is is a thrill, it's a great thrill. Yeah. And to be able to go faster than a Ferrari, you know, yes. in an electric car, yeah. and travel 150 miles is, is very compelling. I did 178 on one Did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, in, what, in, one, in one of those, in a Tesla? In, in, did you? in a day, yeah. Yeah? Driving very carefully. No, not, no? Uh, not at the end, definitely not, because then I went, oh, no, I can get, oh, no, I've got oh, go, juice do I, Sorry, do I go up that? Go left. I'll go left, sorry. Um, oh no, I could tell I had plenty of juice left. No, it wasn't em empty, anywhere near empty at the end. I mean, it was, and I, I drove, drove carefully to start with. Yeah. But then I re fairly early on, I went. Oh, God, if you, if you, that's one of the amazing things. It says 122 miles. And you think, God, we're going further than that today. Then you kind of drive carefully, and it suddenly says 152 miles. I had the opposite. I had the opposite experience because I had just 122 miles. Thrash it! Oh my God, four miles! <laughs> oh, I never got that low. <laughs> We, we arrived, scary. we did a Birmingham to London run, a, a race, Roger Saul and I, and, and, yeah. and, and literally, I mean, it was, I was on 11 miles when right. I got to the mall. And, Do I, am I going the right way? Yeah, yeah. 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 Or, how do you pronounce it? The mall? The mall. The mall. The mall. Oh, I never know it's how you say it. We got to the mall, and because we had this, had this terrible problem, we, we pulled off at the service station halfway, then we got back onto the way, and Roger, instead of going down towards London, went off towards Oxford on an A road, right. and I got onto the motorway and travelled north instead of south. <laughs> So any carbon saving was yes, actually was wiped out by our idiotic <laughs> navigation <laughs> left here. <Yeah>. And um, <laughs> so we got to London and it was dark. Right. This was in July. So yeah. we got oh, there. I see. Oh, got no, there. no. Seriously. Very, very late. And everybody had gone home. You and was, yeah, nobody was, nobody was there to welcome us. We're in a car park now. Now, when I tap my hand on the dashboard, could you perform an emergency <laughs> stop, please? <laughs> We're not there. Are we not there yet? We're here. Oh, we are. We're, just, we're in Froome. I didn't so hear the tap. No, 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 no. It's by the public toilets. Yes, I'll drop you off by the loos, <laughs> by the cottages. 
That's been fantastic. Thank you, Kevin. That was very kind of you. Uh, that was great fun. Actually, do you know what we are. We are that that digger over there. You see that digger? Yeah. Is the site very sadly of one of Britain's last Bailey bridges from the Second World War, which was removed last oh, week. You're kidding? Last that week. Recently? Yeah. Was it went over the river a, there? Yeah, to make way for a new bridge designed by some thrusting young architects right. and engineers, which will be lovely, no yeah. doubt, but which will never have the... So it was a proper old bridge? So it had been there since... Proper was it put up Bailey there, bridge. Well, presumably after the war, it would have been... Yeah, I think I suppose, it was recited, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I, 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 it's very sad because I never photographed it, which I had, because uh. it's just as a demonstration of just how bridges work. It yeah. Is, that is trust, yes. you know. Yeah. It's very, very simple. Oh. Um, it's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Thus yeah. Is, is progress. Yeah. And it had a, a wooden boarding, so every time a car went over it, it went... Oh, you could... Oh, see, it was a roadway. It's a roadway over the river Froome to the other side. Right. People think, oh, yes, we've got to conserve our buildings. We've got to look after our built heritage and, you know, look after look after history. Yeah. And 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 but the trouble is as as a society we're incredibly selective about which, yes, which we like, bits of history we like to polish up. Yeah. And all the things like agricultural buildings and old bridges. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Oh and god, so, yeah, very quickly, aren't they? With no sentiment whatsoever. Yeah. And there's what's cheese and grain? Very cheese difficult. and grain is the is the local. It used to be the cheese and grain market where they used to trade cheese and grain. Oh. And is now the is it a market now? The venue. It's it's the venue for uh, events, gigs, mm, get, farmers I'm just going market. To have a, have a car. Okay. Oh, I, I see. Go. So the, I mean, you what? You can you could you go and see a band there? You type can, of thing? You, oh, I see. What we regularly oh, do. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People here, regular the Frumians regularly do that. A Frumian is quite a good. Mm. Sure, we've been by Frumians. I did see a road sign <laughs> uh, uh, not long ago uh, uh, in front of which there's an old, old finger post in front of which um, a, a branch had just gently fallen and it, it was a finger post pointing one way it said Bath and the other one said Rome ah wow well, Froome yes obviously, obviously. but yes <laughs> no I did wake up you got that one <laughs> oh Rome I didn't know we were near there <laughs> all roads lead to Froome very nice to see you and you Robert yeah um, take care